Who's reading today? Are you reading today? Okay. I'm just trying to figure out. Deacon Mike is here. Who's this guy? Uh, he's, a new, he's a guest deacon. Yeah, yeah guest he's, speaker. He's, he's speaking today. I did see that. Okay. Got too many white elves today. <laughs> everyone you go right ahead and do that <laughs> and while Deacon Mike is taking care of business to be prepared if you would turn in the hymnal to 484 484 Hosea still a couple minutes Try the IRS. <laughs> okay, let us stand in prayer. And Deacon Don. Hey, Don. <laughs> Ryan, we're ready. your 
Today, as we gather in prayer as brothers and sisters in Christ, we also welcome one of our other brothers, Deacon Don Weigel, and he is going to be able to help us to understand what it means to be a brother or sister to many others. But now let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace, the peace, the love of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. And with your spirit. In song we said, we don't want fear to keep us apart. The Lord says, never be afraid of me. No matter what you have sinned, no matter how often you have sinned, no matter how gravely you have sinned, never be afraid to come to me and ask for forgiveness. I am the God of mercy, the God of compassion. I understand. And so let us in these moments of silence now confess those sins, not being afraid, to be honest with God, honest with ourselves, and in those moments of silence also to actually be forgiven. Lord Jesus, you love justice and right. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you saved us and called us to a holy life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and then bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us continue in prayer. Gracious God, you who have commanded us to listen carefully to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to continue to nourish us inwardly, especially by your word, so that with spiritual sight made pure, then we may rejoice to behold your glory. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, He. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. And then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them, and then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. 
And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Did you ever look at something over and over again, something that's really familiar to you, and you see it many, many times, and then one day, you just see something different that you hadn't seen before? Has that ever happened to you? Sometimes, you know, you're driving down the road, and there's a billboard that you've seen a million times, and all of a sudden, you see something different in it. Well, that's what happened to me with today's first reading. And it was probably because I was preparing to talk about Catholic Relief Services, but I always focused on God calling Abram and sending him and his old age and his willingness to, to go out to something and start something entirely new at an at a old age. But today I saw something different. And that was that God blessed Abram in order to become a blessing for others. He tells him, I will bless you, I will bless those that bless you, and you will become a blessing for the nations of the world. And that really impacted me. I really thought about that. All the blessings that we get, all the blessings we have from God are given to us so that we can be blessings to others. That's what it's all about. And that blessing consists of the kinds of things that we see, that we heard about in the, in the psalm. You know, being people who love justice and peace and right. People who are people of mercy. People who extend hands to others. So that we have kind of a, a family resemblance to God who is merciful and just and right. And I guess I thought about that because that's really kind of what Catholic Relief Services is all about. It's about being a blessing to others because we have been so blessed. I'm the diocesan director for Catholic Relief Services, and let me, before I say anything else, let me just go out on a limb here and say, how many people could explain who Catholic Relief Services is? Raise your hand. Not many, okay. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Catholic Relief Services is 80 years old this year. And it started out by the U.S. bishops as war relief services. And the first thing that Catholic Relief War Relief Services did was they were helping refugees from the Second World War escape the violence and the terror in Europe. And in fact, the very first thing they did was resettle refugees from Poland into Mexico, of all places. But since then, the bishops thought, you know, we could do this not just during times of crisis, but we have so many blessings in our country, we can be a blessing for other people all around the world. And so Catholic Relief Services took on this whole life to the point where now after 80 years, we are in over 110 countries around the world. And the best way to describe what we do <clears throat> is to understand that we are the official international humanitarian agency for the U.S. Catholic Church. So you're all familiar with Catholic Charities, and Catholic Charities does all this work within the bounds of U.S. Catholic Relief Services does the same kind of work outside the United States. And both of us are arms of the U.S. bishops. So one does, uh, Catholic Charities does our work dom domestically, and CRS does our work internationally. And the kinds of things that we do, we're focused on migration and hunger and climate change and helping people who, who are victims of disasters, for example. You heard about Turkey and the terrible earthquake there. As soon as, as, soon as the earthquake happened, we already had people on the ground there in Turkey, and immediately they went to work helping the survivors and helping people rebuild their lives. We just recognized that the war in Ukraine is a year old now. And since that year, in the past year, 
CRS and our partners have fed over a million people in Ukraine. And most of the people were what we call internally displaced people, people who didn't leave the country but couldn't stay where their home was because of the violence. But we also helped people who were refugees who were leaving that place and going to Poland or Germany, other places so that they could escape the terror and the violence that's being perpetrated on them by Russia. Refugees is a really strong part of what CRS does. And one of my experiences with CRS was a few years ago, I went over to Europe um, in the Balkans, in uh, Greece and Serbia in particular, for a little while, working with the Syrian refugees. That Syrian war is still going on after 12 years. And these were people who were leaving Syria, going through Turkey, into Greece, through Greece and Macedonia and Serbia and everything, trying to get to Germany in most cases, because Germany was welcoming them as refugees. So I went over there with CRS, and you would stand in the port of Athens, and these ferries would come over, and there would be hundreds of people coming off the boat. Unbelievable numbers of people coming, just this huge mass of humanity coming over. And this was January. So they were cold. So we had, we had some clothes that we were handing out and things like that. And there was this one father, this was hysterical, there was this one father that I can see over here. And he had like this two-year-old boy. And by the way he was acting, I would guess he was two. <laughs> because the dad had this big furry hat to put on the kid's head so he stayed warm. And the kid wasn't having anything of it. So he tried to put the hat on the kid, and the kid ah, ah, and jump around, and he'd try and put it on again. And I looked at that situation, and I thought to myself, ha, I'm a grandpa. I know how to work this out. So I go over, and I go over to the, to the two of them, and I didn't speak Farsi, and he didn't speak English, but he kind of understood when I was kind of saying this, and he kind of gave me the international signal. He went like, <laughs> go ahead. So I took this big furry hat, and I put it on my head, and I made a funny face and, and stuff, and the kid laughed. I thought, okay. And then I took the hat, and I put it on the dad's head, and he caught on right away, and he made a funny face, and he did this, and the kid laughed again. And then we took the hat and put it on the kid's head. And he made a funny face and laughed, and the hat stayed on his head. <laughs> Another gold star for Grandpa. <laughs> but this was the kind of situation that these folks were in. Didn't even have enough to keep them warm. And they had this big black garbage bag that just this, I don't know where the mother or other children were, but this was a man and his son just traveling alone with everything that they had in this one plastic garbage bag. This is the work that CRS does. Helping people who are in desperate situations lead lives and to exercise their God-given right, not just to survive, but to thrive. And one of the ways that we do that is what we're asking you to participate in this year, and hopefully from now on, CRS Race Bowl. We've done this rice bowl project for a few decades now. And there's a basket at this entrance and a basket at that entrance that has these rice bowls in it. I know it doesn't look like a rice bowl, but I'll yeah. show you in a minute. So this rice bowl is our way not just of collecting money. So it's not just about collecting, but it's about connecting. Because we ask you to think about our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Not just through this rice bowl itself, but through the rice bowl website. You can read stories about the people that we serve. And in addition to that, when you open up this rice bowl, the first thing that, that comes out is this calendar. Look at how nifty this is. So this is a calendar for every day in Lent where we help you exercise those three actions of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So for every day of Lent, there's an activity for either prayer or learning 
or fasting or giving to CRS. In addition to that, for all, that, all the days of Lent, there are three recipes here. One recipe for each of the countries that we're featuring this year. Honduras, Kenya, and the Philippines. And they are meatless recipes. So that when Friday comes around and you want to abstain from meat, you can make one of these recipes from one of the countries where we serve. And if these don't look good, <laughs> you can go to the crsricebowl.org and there are dozens of recipes that we've collected over the years. And they're pretty easy to make, and my wife and I have done a couple of them, and they're really tasty. And it allows you to remember the people that are in desperate situations, our brothers and sisters around the world, and we can remember them by the food that we cook, and what we eat, and the way that we make a sacrifice. So I'm gonna give this to you because I don't <laughs> wanna hold it anymore. <laughs> so once you take the, the calendar out and you have that, it's very simple to just take this and you fold in the edges like this and fold this part down and this part and you do that twice and you end up with this neat little package. So what's interesting about this is that over the years, you know, it's now 2023. Now you have this nice little rice bowl. Now it's 2023. So who carries change around anymore, right? <laughs> So it still does take, in the middle here, it does still take quarters and nickels, but it also takes paper money. It does, it takes dollars and tens, and new and improved this year, we've reinforced it so that it actually also takes thousand dollar checks. <laughs> so, you know, feel free. <laughs> so this goes great on your kitchen table, on a counter in your kitchen, to remind you of our brothers and sisters around. And then, at the end of Lent, there will be instructions about where to bring them, and then we'll collect all the money. And once we collect all the money throughout the whole diocese, and we're getting more all the time, once we collect all the money throughout the whole diocese, 75% of this money will go to CRS for the work that we do around the world. But, 25% of the money we collect stays here in the diocese. And we use it to fund projects that, uh, that help the poor here in the diocese. And, it's, and we always fund projects that connect with our missions of hunger and migration and climate change. So a couple of years ago, we took the 25% and gave it to the Catholic Charities Immigrant and, uh, and Refugee um, program, and last year we gave it to an organization called Justice for Migrant Families, which helps people who are being released from Batavia and then just dumped in the middle of the city of Buffalo. So the 25% of what we give will stay here to connect us locally and globally. I want to thank you in advance for whatever you do for CRS, and not just for the money that you give us, but for your prayers and for your understanding of who we are. And through CRS and throughout this Lent, we hope that we can recognize the blessings that we have so that through CRS we can be a blessing for our brothers and sisters around the world. Here you go, this to go with it. There you go. <laughs> He's the thousand dollars donor. <laughs> <laughs> Let us stand in prayer. Lord, once again we come to you so aware of the pain, the suffering, the fears in Syria and Turkey. We think of all those who have lost their lives those who have lost family and friends, those who are recovering from their injuries, those who will never recover. So Lord, may our prayers go out to them, and especially with agencies like the Catholic Relief Society and other government agencies, be a sense of hope for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord and Lord, as the war still goes on in Ukraine, May we not forget them, our brothers and sisters in a war-torn country. 
We who do not face the tragedy of war locally should always be aware of it internationally and never give up trying to bring peace to the world. And so for the help that those individuals need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, finally for ourselves, we ask that you help us, especially for families who are at war, at war within a marriage, at war with children, parents, at war within themselves individually, contemplating suicide. Lord, somehow may our prayers and the power of your love give them light and peace, give them something of inspiration to be able to declare a ceasefire and so that mentally, emotionally, and physically they may be one. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear and if anybody else has a special prayer, please let us know so we can make it our prayer as well. Lord, hear our prayer. For Brooklyn and Natalie, two uh, young children that are going to be baptized today, that the bright light of baptism will shine forever in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, one of the great blessings you gave us is the gift of prayer. You also gave us the gift of hope, the gift of faith that allows us to come before you once again today, knowing you not only hear our prayers, but that you will answer them as only you can. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. amen. Our offertory song can be found in your hymnal number 930, Taste and See, 930 in your hymnal. And we can have some collectors come up too. That would be great. The collectors. Yeah. 
Now let us pray together and ask, what we do give to the Lord in bread, in wine, in our very lives? Everything we give will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept. The sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, may these gifts, we pray, continually cleanse us of our faults and sanctify us, your faithful, both in body and and mine for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. This we ask through Jesus who lives forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere under all circumstances to give you praise and thanks, most gracious God especially in Christ Jesus. For you will that, especially during Lent, that our self-denial would give you true thanks, that would also humble our sinful pride, as well as contribute to the feeding of the poor and those in need for whatever reason. And then this way we can imitate you in your kindness toward us as we share that kindness with others. And that is why we join together now with one another here, with those at home, with the angels and saints, as we sing these words of praise. Indeed, holy, O Lord, you are the source, the font of all holiness. Therefore, make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them just like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, and so he took bread, he said the blessing, he gave you thanks. And then he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, who said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And there 
therefore, as we do celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. And we thank you for counting each and every one of us worthy to be here in your presence this morning and to minister to you. Humbly, we do pray that by partaking of the very body and blood of Christ, then we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your people here, at home, and throughout the world. Continue to use Francis, our Pope, Mike, our Bishop, the women and the men who are leaders of all religions, churches, and denominations. May they continue to be your instruments of justice, of peace, love, and harmony in the world you have created for everyone, not just us. We also ask in a very special way that you would remember our relatives, our friends, those who through death have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died touched by your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. And we remember in a special way Danny Sullivan and Frank Newland. But Lord, we also ask that you would have mercy on us so that along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with her husband, Joseph, the apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we in this day and age may lead lives pleasing to you, and then may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life, and we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O Lord Almighty Father, we praise and glorify your holy name, and in the Spirit we sing our praise. Now, being aware because of the words that were shared with us by Deacon Don, let us reunite ourselves with some of those people he talked about, that is not just talking about them, but now in prayer being one with them. So let us reach out to one another and to them as we pray to their Father and ours. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sin primarily, but more importantly upon our faith. So we could share peace and unity here with one another today, with others the rest of this day, and then one day with you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord's peace and his joy be with all of you. Amen. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign and prayer for peace. Peace, God bless. Thank you. Peace, God bless. Although you're not on that side. Peace. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Take away. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are all of us, now called to join in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Still, my 
There's a large number of announcements this morning. <laughs> right. Father Roy invites everyone to pray at the Stations of the Cross with him on Fridays during Lent. Stations will be at 6.30 p.m. on Fridays in the chapel. Please join us for our Lenten retreat on March 25th, starting at 2 p.m. John Wilde will lead the retreat, and there will be time for adoration and confession during the retreat. Reminder that this is Catholic charity solicitation season. Um, you should all have received at least one mailing. Uh, the contributions can be sent in by mail. They can be made online or with a pledge card. There are empty pledge cards at both doors. The pledge cards here um, have the parish number on it. But most of all, thank you very much for your generosity. Last year, this parish raised over $130,000 to support initiatives throughout the diocese. Please be generous again this year if you can. Father Roy needs help fixing a music, three musical nativity sets. You if can you skip think you that can, one. I have a volunteer already. Thank you. are all set? Yeah. Ignore that. Yeah. Our senior group is meeting Wednesday, March 8th, after the noon communion service. We'll have another meeting of the Mommy and Me Young Mothers group on Saturday, March 11th at 10 a.m. Join us for reflection, support from fellow moms, and playtime for your kids. The Cover Girls Book Club will meet on Monday, March 13th at 7 p.m. They're reading The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. The men's club will meet on Tuesday, March 14th at 9 a.m. The men's club is hosting a St. Patrick's Day party on Thursday, March 16th. The party starts at 7 and will feature a performance, Kevin Clark, joined by our very own Augie Constantino and Bill Healy. The event is free and open to all. The men's club will provide beer for the evening, but be sure to bring some munchies to pass in your own wine and pop. On Saturday, April 8th, the Easter Buddy will visit the Newman Center as we have a family Easter egg hunt. We need plastic eggs, candy, and prizes for the hunt, as well as volunteers to help us hide the eggs. Contact Katie Dolson, Colson if you can help out the day of and leave donations by the front office. Thank you. Our young adult group is starting a Lenten book club. We are reading The Best of You by Dr. Allison Cook. On April 27th, we'll be joined by Dr. Cook herself. Contact Leah if you're interested in joining. In joining. We meet Tuesdays at 7 p.m. in the parish office of St. Benedict's Church. This Wednesday, we'll be having sausage bombers and a mashed potato bar for the student dinner. Our Emmaus Reflection Group meets on campus at 2 p.m. every Thursday. Check Instagram for our meeting spot and weekly theme. Our UB Rooted Women's Group will meet on Monday, March 6th at 5 p.m. in the Student Lounge. We will continue our study of women in the Bible and then play board games. Thank you. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Ed? Thank you, Father Roy. Two real brief ones. Continue to show your Newman Center loyalty and pride. We have the professionally designed magnets and bumper stickers for those of you traveling 
The stickers stick well in your luggage so you can find it as it comes down the carousel. The magnets go well in your car, and as you drive around, you can find also who belongs to the Newman Center and speed up and give them a wave. They're two for five dollars. I have them after mass. Please see me. And then on Sunday, March 19th, please join Father Pat and Rin for a New Year's Thai dinner at Rin Thai Bistro. It's from two to five. It's a full course dinner, chef prepared from soup to, or salad to dessert. It's $70 a person. I have information. Please see me after Mass. We're limited to 40 people, so please see me after Mass. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And thank you, Dan, for your words and for your example. Thank you very much. <laughs> and before our lunch break, let us stand in prayer. <laughs> Bless all of us, your faithful, dear Lord. Give us a blessing that endures forever. Keep us faithful to the gospel that we have heard so we can not just hear it, but live it. May we always desire to do those things that will obtain an eternal happiness and peace. This we ask in the name of Jesus who lives forever and ever. Amen. 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 May the Lord be with all of you. With your spirit. May God bless us and many through us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A closing song can be found in your hymnal number 479, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, 479 in your hymnal. Shanta.